Hi everybody, it's Fragrant Jock here with another honest opinion. We're indoors today, the other day or two days ago. Um, I done an honest opinion from Largs, a small town off the west coast of Scotland. Um, really noisy, the ferry and everything was noisy, but I managed to get there. Uh, that was on the Nishani Havasat. Absolutely gorgeous fragrance, my favourite at the moment. Anyway, today's honest opinion, I've seen a few reviews on it, it's been out for quite a while. It's a flanker of the original, um, so I thought I'd try it, considering once you, once you see it, this is a, probably the, well, Scotland's the biggest producer of whiskey in the world um, at the moment, but USA, Ireland, Japan, they're all catching up, especially Japan, um, but anyway, I thought I would do it on this and uh, try it because it's got good reviews really good reviews and most most people's uh, opinions and um, so I thought you know what I'm going to try it and today's honest opinion is on this it's Mugler Terry Mugler's pure malt it's a wee bit dusty um, I only got it the other day brand spanking new I think it's just been sitting in a warehouse for a while anyway I got this, uh, this is 100 ml, I got it for £40, um, I just googled and the cheapest was uh, Essential, or um, I think it's Essential, uh, the website, and I got it for £40 odds, really good bargain, uh, most of them were priced at £48, £50 and upwards, on eBay it was a lot more uh, expensive so I thought that was a good deal and I'll get it as I say it's 100 ml comes in this bottle the bottles look great you know and obviously the Amen original is done in a way with the, the, the star um, but the sprayers on these plastic bottles are absolute garbage you can see why a lot of people cut there to make it easier a lot of people cut a bit so the sprayers a lot better uh, and you're not just pressing down. You can actually do it yourself, but just be careful with the, the knife. Uh, it just makes the sprayer a bit better. I, I, I know I've known a lot of people who actually take them out of these plastic containers, but I, I think you know it's be better to leave it in it. Anyway, um, I sprayed I sprayed this the other day. Had it on. Uh, really good projection. Um, Longevity, I would say, in my skin, between four and six hours. Uh, some of the notes in it are bergamot, orange, patchouli, vanilla, cedar, cedar wood, amber, uh, fruits, coffee bean and musk. Uh, it's a kind of smoky, sensual, woody uh, scent. Uh, you know, with that boozy whiskey. The, the, the whiskey, I get it initially on my skin. You get that kind of because I, I don't drink whiskey, but I love the smell of it. Uh, it's a kind of, kind of sweet, um, really nice, appealing smell uh, to smell whiskey. Uh, don't do it up too close or you'll burn your eyelids right now. Um, but this this was, uh, so Terry Mugler says, or the Mugler website says, it was to honour the tradition of Scotch whiskey. Uh, why they done this? Uh, but I don't know anyway it's a good market employee it, it really is a nice fragrance it's no groundbreaking but it really is nice um, I would say it's probably more suited to cooler days or cooler nights but you can get away with this anytime apart from searing heat um, it really is nice as I say I tried it the other day I got, I, you get that sweet blast of kind of malt right away and then it dies down to the amen dna everyone in the, in this line has got the same dna uh cryptomin pure coffee pure tonka pure havan once you go by that kind of whiskey vibe you you get into the the usual mugler dna which is nice the original amen is a nice scent um as I say, projection and longevity, really good for the price of it. 
But it really is. I would say, you know, I like Cryptomint. Uh, I like Pure Havan. I'd say that's, this is right up there with them. As I say, it's no groundbreaking, but it's nice. It really is a, a, a nice fragrance. Very masculine. I'm not saying that women couldn't wear this, but for me it's no unisex. For me it's more masculine. Um, but who knows nowadays, you know what I mean? Anything goes. Uh, so just a wee bit, I've done a, a, a kind of profile on um, Terry Mugler not that long ago. So just a wee bit of history on whiskey. Obviously, Scotland is the biggest producer of Scotch whisk, or whiskey in the world. Uh, but as I say, places like Japan, America especially as well, are catching up. But as I say, I mentioned Japan before, they really are. I think the, the, the thing with Japan is they've bought up a lot of the Scots whiskey production, so now they're taking it on board. You know, so a lot of the originals sold out, but there still is a lot uh, of whiskey bonds all scattered about Scotland and Islay and places like uh, Dumbarton, the west coast of Scotland. Um, but some of the history... Um, well, during the American Revolution, George Washington actually operated his own distillery in Mount Vernon. That's quite interesting because it was used as currency uh, during that time. Um, so there you go. Obviously, Prohibition came in in 1920 and it lasted to 1933. But whiskey was exempt because not that you could buy it. Or obviously, a lot of people distilled it and or the rest of it illegally, but you could get it out of pharmacies because it was used as a kind of medicine type thing, so it was kind of exempt in that way. Uh, the most expensive whiskey ever, this was a surprise, is called Isabella's Isley. It was sold for 6,200,000. Not just the whiskey was so expensive, the decanter had like 8,000 diamonds in it, rubies and it was made of white gold so it's probably more the decanter than the whiskey but in britain in 2018 a bottle of macallum 1926 was sold at uh, christie's for 1.1 million there you go imagine buying a bottle of whiskey for 1.1 million you'd never want to drink it although if you bought a bottle of whiskey at that price you could you probably you know you can afford it you would be drinking it um, so some people get more money than sense. Anyway, something to keep, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, but no, this is a really, it really is a, a nice uh, scent, and it does have that whiskey, sweet whiskey vibe right initially. But that dies down, and then you're left with the amen. You can smell the, the definitely the vanilla, the musk, um, and wood. And that would, because it, it does it does smell like a kind of whiskey that's been soaked in a barrel. You get that kind of vibe off it, that smoky. And it is quite sensual, I would say. It's quite, it's very masculine. You could dress this up, dress it down. It really is quite a lovely scent. Anyway, just a quick, honest opinion. Uh, I'm going out and about on Wednesday again, going to a different place. So I'm going to do an opinion then. Uh, I'll need to... See what, what one to pick. Okay, anyway, I hope everybody's safe and well. Bye for now.